Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Horn Call podcast. My name is James Bolden, IHS Publications Editor and your host. I am extremely excited about my guest today, Dr. Jennifer Schultes, Professor of Horn at Texas A&M University, Kingsville, and the host of IHS 54. We have a great conversation lined up for you today. I speak with uh, Jennifer about all of the amazing things that are going to be happening uh, this summer at IHS 54 held on the campus of Texas A&M University, Kingsville. Uh, I don't want to get in the way of our conversation. I will say, uh, before we get started, though, that when we recorded this interview, uh, there were some things about IHS 54 that had not been announced yet, like the the roster of uh, featured artists. But if you go to the IHS 54 website, IHS54.com, you will see that there is now a slate of fantastic, internationally renowned guest artists that are just going to be one of the highlights, among many things, uh, at this year's horn symposium so without any further delay here's my conversation with jennifer schultes So, and again, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of what I'm sure is a uh, incredibly busy schedule planning for the 54th International Horn Symposium. Um, and I'm just excited to have you here today. Uh, for, for those who may not know um, about your background and about the school and the setting for IHS 54, uh, would you maybe give us a little bit of an introduction to yourself and then the studio and, and uh, a little bit about uh, Texas A&M Kingsville? Sure. I'm uh, an Arkansas native, um, went to the University of Arkansas and, and um, the University of Iowa then. So got my taste of frigid cold weather and decided to head south to South Texas. Um, we're pretty much as far south as you can go. It's about two hours um, north of Mexico. Mm. Um, so it was quite a different environment. Um, growing up in Arkansas, we were part of the Southwest Conference, and so all the teams we played uh, at the time that I was at the University of Arkansas was was all um, Texas teams, except for maybe one Oklahoma team. And so um, the funny thing is, is I was so influenced with Boo, Texas, <laughs> that I had it on my list of one of those places you'd never want to um, live in or have a career and lo and behold, my whole entire professional career has um, been here in Texas. So <laughs> never close any doors. One hundred percent. And it's it, you know, it's it's so interesting where where life and a career will, will take you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we all um, start out as young um, horn players and we we think we can write our future and um, the future writes itself. Um, But I I do want to share with you about uh, what South Texas is like. Yes, please. Um, Yeah, yeah, South Texas is um, a really unique area, and it's the region is literally called South Texas. Um, So it's it's an interesting area in that um, it it has strong ranching and cowboy history. Um, It has... um, as far as the kind of natural environment that you'll see here, um, you, you'll see uh, what is called high chaparral, which is kind of shrubby um, trees and bushes. And then you'll also have um, coastal, uh, which is palm trees and all those tropical plants. And so, um, as, as we're sitting here in our Zoom meeting, you can see the background of the poster that I, uh, picture of the poster that I have for IHS 54, and you'll literally see cactus and um, palm trees at the same time, which is really unusual. So we get this um, really deserty, hot kind of um, feeling, but also high humidity and lots of wind Mm. so so it's the combination of that high chaparral and and also the um the coastal so so very interesting um kind of environment to live in it was quite an adjustment adjustment for me coming from arkansas 
especially the north part of Arkansas, um, I'm in the hills. Uh, when I when I was growing up, I was in the hills, and you you were surrounded by trees and plants, and could hop on a trail anytime you wanted to, and it was it was quite beautiful. So when people come here, um, the beauty of of this area is um, is the u- uniqueness of the area, and um, hopefully we'll have lots of rain this summer so that we'll see the things that we saw this this past fall, which was still really nice, lush green grass and actually beautiful green foliage on the trees. However, in August, most Augusts, we, we will have gone through two really hot uh, months already, mm-hmm. and things will have started drying up some by the time we get to August. But um, my, my um, um, optimistic nature is saying that it's going to be um, a beautiful scenery. Um, but just plan on it being hot, folks. We're, you know, you're not going to be um, outside, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not going to be outside um, except for walking um, f- from one place to the next. Uh, most of the events for the symposium are going to be in one building. Um, and the and that's a, that's a really good thing that includes also our exhibitors it's all in one building as well mm-hmm. and it's in our fabulous new building hopefully everybody's had a chance to go and see um the video that um has been put in on my website but i mean on my facebook page but also in several uh, several other facebook pages and i think maybe um ihs uh, facebook page um, I'm not and, on and that. the YouTube channel. I think we are putting it in, in every uh, outlet that we have access to uh, yeah. IHS uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Um, so absolutely. Uh, so I'm I'm hoping people will check that out so that they they get a really good feel for what the venue is like. Um, there's there's a some fun things that uh, I do have planned for some outside activities. Um, and that is, uh, we, I want to have each evening after the, um, after the featured artists con- uh, concerts, um, we're going to have, um, refreshments and alcoholic beverages and other beverages available, um, and tables and chairs for socializing. Um, and it's going to be outside in our beautiful veranda area that we have in front of the building and um and that the evenings here are really beautiful there it's mild weather lots of uh, nice breeze going on so it, it won't be stifling hot and it'll give you an opportunity to get a little fresh air and sit around and chat with your friends and of course for those who don't want to sit outside they can sit inside as well mm-hmm. and plan to have some little bit of live music during that time um, also, and just kind of create this nice um, social atmosphere for everyone. Um, so, so yeah, I, the the Kingsville, the the university, to kind of get back to more about um, the university itself. Um, it it was um, it began in 1925. Um, it's a um, university is is started as a teaching university as many of them do Mm -hmm. or did at that time and it what somebody will discover when they come to the campus is just how beautiful the campus is it has consistent architecture which is a mission style architecture Mm -hmm. throughout the whole entire campus so you don't see modern buildings sitting next to an old building um, of a different architectural style so that was one of the things that struck me the most um, having never been to South Texas, mm-hmm. when I came down to interview, that just struck me that it was it was amazing how beautiful the campus was. And and the flow of the campus is is a really nice flow. You don't you don't have a lot of congestion and things like that. So and it's not confusing either. Uh, of course, the, this campus is smaller than, say, if you went to like a, a UT campus or Baylor or North Texas. Uh, it's 
you know, it's a smaller campus, so um, you can drive about three blocks and you're to one side and then three blocks to the other side and then about a square of that all around. And that's pretty much the whole entire campus. So so um, I, I don't think people will get lost when they come here. And I, I also, see that as a benefit for sure. Yeah. 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 So but also our um, music um, building is right on the corner of the campus it is like the oh what what i can't think of the word right now but it's like a showcase um building because it's one of the first buildings you'll see if you approach the campus the way most people approach it okay so yeah so it's not hard to find um let's see lo- uh, talking a little bit more about the area kingsville um, you know, when when people think of Texas, they they think of Longhorns and cowboys mm-hmm. and oil, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, and cowboys, not in the sense of the football team, um, but uh, in the sense of the the roping um, cattle wrangling mm-hmm. um, horse riding cowboys. And that's exactly what Kingsville's foundation was. It was uh, the the city itself um, used to be part of the famous um, King Ranch, um, and is it's famous to not necessarily to us uh, musicians, uh, but if you mention it to an agriculture person or a rancher, mm-hmm. um, everyone knows about the King Ranch. The King Ranch um, is a, you can find um, you can find uh king ranch owned lands all over the nation but also all over the world okay yeah at one time they were the largest ranch in the entire world um and they're they're quite diversified that you know they not only do the the ranching stuff but they do agri uh, agricultural development and studies um oil um uh the, the cattle the cattle industry also the um they do, used to do a little bit of horse racing okay. um uh, but i was i think i was in florida one time driving down the road and all of a sudden saw the king ranch symbol and took a closer look at it and sure enough it was the king ranch from south texas it was their symbol and i was like okay <laughs> yep, the stories are true. <laughs> well, and and if I'm not mistaken, and this is you know, uh, even if uh, folks have have never been to to Texas or or the United States, uh, th- that name may be familiar to them. I do believe that Carrie Turner is also originally from that that part of of the country. I think I remember reading somewhere in his bio that he's he's from that part of Texas. Yeah, ding ding ding! You win the prize. Um, <laughs> Yes, after I came here, I was um, contacted um, by the American Horn Quartet mm. and by Kerry Turner himself. And um, I, this was probably about 1999, and he, he uh, said, hey, we're, we're doing a tour of Texas, and uh, could we come to Kingsville? And so that was pretty much the first time I'd ever heard of uh, the American Horn Quartet and Kerry Turner. Um, so hopefully um, that is uh, that doesn't say that I had my head buried in the sand, but um, it probably does. Uh- <laughs> no, I, I I don't think so at all. I mean, you know, it's uh, one of the beautiful things about the Horn Society is there's just people from literally all over the world. And I think that's one of the very special things about a symposium, you know, like, and, and thank goodness we're going to have an in-person symposium. You know, it's, I, I think oh, people, yes. people are just hungry for that, for uh, being able to get together in person and, you know, uh, uh, safely, of course, but, you know, it's, uh, it's something I think people are going to be really excited about come August. Yeah. So, so just one more trivia thing about Carrie Turner, the things you've read it, um, it, it was after he contacted me, I, happened to have a piece written by him and i looked at the information at the front of the the piece and it said um carrie turner born on the um the famous king ranch Mm -hmm. and i was like uh excuse me (laughs) (laughs) like okay (laughs) i can relate to this person so 
So yeah, um, this is his birthplace. Uh, he wasn't born on the ranch, but um, he was born in a hospital that is no longer being used as a hospital. Um, but it, but he was born here, right in the middle of Kingsville. Um, and then his father was, uh, he's a well-known band director, and his father is a band director uh, at a school where my husband is directing right now. Okay. So small world. Um, we, we often joke about, um, when Carrie and his wife, um, come by to visit occasionally, um, we joke about where he's born because the hospital could be used, the, the mm -hmm. building itself could be used as a wonderful, um, haunted house during Halloween. It's oh. vacant and quite scary and imposing looking, yeah. <laughs> But um, that's kind of our little joke about things. But yes, I'm super excited about um, uh, the symposium being live. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, please, everyone, please come. Um, I know there's, um, and I'm going to jump right into kind of the dark horse, um, the, the whole COVID and all the variants that we're experiencing and, and all the the um, uh, changes of what our rules are when we engage. Sure. Um, I just want to tell everyone that um, I'm totally aware of this. Um, however, I, I'd still like to encourage people to do their best to come because what we need to learn to do I, I think we're at a point now that we can say this because we have vaccines, because we have had experience dealing with this um, this um, ill this the, this disease is mm -hmm. that or whatever people call it they they call it a variety of things but it, it's time for us to learn to still engage um, in the time of COVID, and that's what I'm hoping people will see. Um, moving forward and and thinking about uh, attending the symposium is that they engage in a time of COVID. So you're thinking of wearing your masks, um, sanitizing, um, all those mm -hmm. things to try to protect yourself from catching the virus. Um, I, I know that we now have had uh, um, at least one big event in the nation as far as musicians go, the the um, Midwest um, conference That's or right. whatever they call it, um, that that was uh, in Chicago in December. So mm -hmm. um, we're starting to learn to live with this. And um, I think it's we can start looking at some of these um, big gathering um events and learn from them and see how people are engaging that uh, in a couple of weeks there's the big texas music educators association convention in, in san antonio, san antonio. Yep. and that draws people from all around the nation and um i'm going to be watching very closely um, at what they're doing and learning there's going to be the international women's brass conference up in uh, north texas in mm -hmm. um in may I'll be watching what they're doing. And there's the Trumpet Guild thing in Texas as well, in San Antonio, and in, in I think it's in June. And, and so I'm learning from all these big conferences and keeping an eye on, on how people are living in the time of COVID and still mm -hmm. engaging and still getting back to um, these big learning and uh, in learning environments, uh, learning, learning events, um, life changing symposiums, um, and, and so on and so forth. So the one thing that, um, as far as protection and, um, some, some guides, policies, uh, for the symposium, I've posted a, a COVID-19 policy on the website, mm -hmm. um, I want everyone to know that this is a living document. It will be updated and, um, and for everyone to just keep an eye on that document on that page. Also um, make sure you keep an eye on any kind of CDC guidelines, any kind of um, 
if you're flying uh, any kind of uh, airline guidelines um, mm -hmm. and uh, other types of travel that you might be um, using, then keep in, go, go do your homework. Um, I've provided mm -hmm. some links to some places um, that really are out of my control. Um, but I can tell you that Texas is very open with their, um, they're pretty like, okay, we don't have to wear masks. Uh, we don't have to social distance. They've pretty much lifted um, uh, rules and regulations that we had at the time before vaccinations. Um, so it's more of an individual thing. Um, you will not be told you have to wear a mask, but you also are not discouraged from wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. um, I personally, uh, now with this Omicron variant, um, I personally am wearing my mask, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, uh, this, this silly variant, right? Um, so you just kind of have to be smart and um, think about health and, and the health of others. One thing that I am doing, um, and I'm, I don't know how challenging this will be in August, um, but I'm uh, asking that everybody um, take a test mm -hmm. one to three days prior to the symposium, no matter your vaccination status, and mm -hmm. for you to uh, show proof of a negative test. Mm -hmm. And so that will be um, one policy that I have right now um, for everyone. And um, just just be aware of that. Um, and like I said, I don't I don't know how difficult it will be to get tests um, in August compared to now. But um, you know, s some insurance companies are saying you can pick up some free tests with your um, mm -hmm. and 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 through your insurance. Um, and so stockpile at least uh, one extra test that you can take right before the symposium. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's good advice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, I appreciate that uh, you and and your university are committed to, to having an in-person symposium. And I think if nothing else, all of this the last couple of years has taught us, you just have to be flexible. You just have to be, you know, it, it, if the symposium is going to happen in person, then we're going to make it happen. And you just have to kind of roll with things and things may change. Things may, you know, the the, the way things are structured right now, that, that may change a little bit. And that's okay. I think people are going to be okay with that. And, you know, I think that's, uh, if nothing else coming out of all of this, um, people have just had to learn to be flexible with things, with their schedule, with their, you know, uh, how how their, their daily rhythms go. It's just sometimes things can have to change and they have to change kind of fast sometimes. Yes, I that, that sums it up really nicely. <clears throat> the 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 thing is what you said about um, uh, the university and and you know the school of music and, and myself committed to an in person um, uh, symposium. I'm I'm so excited to see people again, and I don't yes. know if you guys <laughs> are, but if you are, then go register for the symposium. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I just kind of wanted to highlight if that's a, if I can jump into some highlights. Of please, the, please do. The yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to highlight some of the things that I think um, ev uh, make this symposium maybe a little bit more unique. Um, every host of the symposium brings their little flair to the, the um, event mm -hmm. um, based on, their own experiences at symposia so i've been to several symposium and i and, and symposias and i've i've always like gone okay if i ever hosted one i'd like to do this you know mm -hmm. i i would like for my participants to have experienced this or or what have you so i i um kind of interjected a few things that were mine um i've also listened to people as they contacted me and so um, I've added a few things based on conversations with people. And um, just I, I do want to call out to folks, um, if you have some ideas, run them by me. I'm, I may not be able to incorporate them at this point, but 
uh, who knows? I might be able to. And mm -hmm. in in it, you know, just like um, just like every host has a different um, goal for their s symposium, it it's um, helpful to it, it can be um, kind of a one track mind kind of thing when you when you get caught cut up caught up in your own stuff that you're doing but if you have some outside suggestions and ideas it really kind of goes oh i didn't think of that or um that's an excellent idea i didn't know people didn't experience things in the way i had mm -hmm. so so um like i said before i i want to have some social areas i um, I often find that when I go to symposia, there there's not always a place to sit down and chat with people. We end up kind of like leaning against a wall, you know, <laughs> or talk, chatting in a hallway or something. Yeah, yeah, and then we're we're there for like an hour, you know. Right. Yep. <laughs> it's, not, it's kind of uncomfortable. So um, I have in my head, and and I just have to, you know, make it come to fruition. But I have two social areas that I want to have. Uh, for sure. And um, w the first one during the day, in the heat of the day, um, I want to have a lobby cafe. We have a um, rather large lobby area. Mm -hmm. And so people get to sit around um, on chairs and sit at tables and um, there will be refreshments available for purchase, beverages uh, for purchase. And um, so um, it's, it'll be a great opportunity for people to sit and talk and make up for the last two years. Um, and then in the evenings after this, the concerts, we're going to have the veranda after dark um, oh, uh, area. So uh, that's and I plan to have some live music, such as like a jazz combo or maybe some mariachi on the evening. I'm thinking things like um, uh, having... Uh, we have a great Texas beer called Shiner Beer. Well, mm. I want to make sure I have that there. We also have some local microbrewery um, breweries here in town. I want to see if I can get them represented and then have, of course, like a margarita night or something like that. So, okay. so yeah, so these are some of my thoughts on that. Um, and people um, uh, just know that I will probably have to cut you off at at least one o'clock so I can go get some sleep. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> and it will be well deserved and much needed, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So another thing that um, I I have uh, going on here at the symposium is, of course, the IHS's um, solo competitions and the solo competition and the the orchestra excerpt competition. Those are through the International Horn Society. So everybody, check out hornsociety.org. And um, uh, this is mainly university students and get involved. You got to watch for some um, deadlines on those competitions. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then for the IHS 54 sponsored um, competitions, I'm planning on a, um, a jazz um, competition, jazz horn. The cutoff age is 25. Um a natural horn competition and the cutoff age on that is 29 a um a, a university and professional horn ensemble competition and a university and pre-university horn quartet competition and there's a solo competition for pre-university students as well and that kind of brings me to this whole pre-university stuff um, on the last two days of the symposium, I have what is called Youth Days, um, and they'll be on August 5th and 6th, and um, the students are invited to come here on those days to experience some more some, uh, some age-related um, events, such as um, such as master classes, um, competitions, and horn ensembles and so on and so forth um, that that are um, geared toward students of the pre-university age. And so I'm expecting a huge influx of 
um, high school and maybe even middle school students. I mean, it is Texas after all, Mm y'all. So (laughs) I'm, I'm hoping the, the good news is, is if I have a huge influx, the bad news is if I have a huge influx (laughs) because Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it could possibly overrun the last two days of the symposium, (laughs) but I, the time will tell, and we will have locations on campus to move events to if for for that age group if we need to. So don't worry, it won't be standing room only. Um, they the these youth days um, are geared toward, um, like I said, high school students, and I'm having it on the fifth and the sixth of mm-hmm. August, which is a Friday and Saturday. Um, Texas already starts with their marching band camps. Um, and so mm-hmm. those students are out there learning drill um, at this time of year. But most every school I've spoken with so far, they're like, I can get our students out of the last two days of our of our uh, camp week. So, mm-hmm. so uh, that's the good news about uh, having it on those two days. Um, of course, that age group is welcome to come throughout the whole week, especially um, if you're not from Texas. uh, Shout out to all the states that don't have uh, marching camps during that week. Y'all come on down, all right? (laughs) Um, And for for those that may not know, I mean, uh, band is taken extremely seriously in Texas. Uh, It's tied to, you know, the marching band thing is tied to football being an extremely popular sport in in, in the state of Texas, you know, um, and some of these high school marching bands, I'm not kidding you, are four or even maybe 500 people. Uh, and that's that's not an exaggeration. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. if you if you want to know, go go look up on YouTube, look up the Allen High School Marching Band, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, an ISD sort of near the Dallas Fort Worth area. But uh, yeah, their marching band has like 600 people in it. So it's 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 taken extremely seriously. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Football is the driving force behind that. And um, the cool thing about Texas schools, and this was something, you know, coming from Arkansas, if if you had two band directors, when I was growing up, if you had two band directors in your program, you were a rich school, you know, <laughs> it was a, an anomaly. Um, usually one director does everything from beginners all the way to through high school mm-hmm. in the, the small, those smaller schools. Um, and then you get to some of the larger schools and then they have a, a director for each um, kind of age group. But but yeah, um, coming to Texas, it was amazing to me to see the number of directors in each school program. Mm-hmm. And, and private and, instructors too, private instructors, private instructors on, on almost every instrument. And, you know, it, the, the quality of musicians, uh, especially young musicians in Texas is uh, like none other. I'm sure you can speak to that, you know, with, with some of the students you must get in your studio that some of those, uh, the, the music training uh, that's going on there is, is really quite incredible. Yeah. And the, the all state requirements, as far as the literature goes is um, quite challenging. So it's, it, it's kind of like, is the music driving the, um, technical level, the the end result, um, or is it um, just the fact that they have so such great resources in mm-hmm. the schools? Uh, it's probably a combination of the both. Yeah, I would I would think so. Um, no. uh, so let me ask you this, uh, uh, Jennifer. So as you know, we've we you and I have both been to these uh, symposia many times, and it's always a thing of well you know, I can't get to everything, but what should be on my not to be missed list? Is there anything you can share at this point that, you know, is there a particular gathering or or event or or concert or something that that you are just going to want to put on everybody's radar? And even if you can't name names of artists or anything, but a particular uh, thing that everybody should just make sure that they come to? That's a really good question. I Um, you kind of catching me off guard here because I, I know I can tell you that, you know, for for those veteran participants at the symposia, it's really difficult to go to everything. Mm-hmm. And 
I, I think that um, it's really important, and, and this was something that I was uh, thinking about as I was planning this, but it's it's really important that different time or, or throughout the day that somebody could literally go, um, say, the the college the college student track. Mm -hmm. So try to make sure that you don't have a lot of um, overlapping events mm -hmm. uh, for college age and mm -hmm. then the university professor track. And so you don't have overlapping events. Does that all make sense? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I, one thing that I really, and this was something I have to um, give Marilyn Kloss a shout out to because she's the person who really tried to encourage me to not forget about the amateur horn players. Mm -hmm. And so having an amateur track each day. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and like I said, the youth days on those last two days, that's, that's your youth track, you know? So, so I think if there, if I was going to say um, something about the scheduling, that's how I'm organizing it. And hopefully not too many um, things will overlap where you'll want to go to three things all at the same hour, but it will happen. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> oh yeah. There's just no way to fit that many things into to a limited amount of time, you know? I, yes. Um, because I, you know, you, you want to give everybody a chance to participate on um, a higher level for those who might want to present um, whether it's a performance or a lecture or a master class or, or okay. whatever you want to allow people because that's that's the um, that's the bread and butter of the symposia without okay. all those um, contributing artists then then really the symposium kind of falls flat um, the the other thing is um, we're really working on our exhibitors. Mm -hmm. So if any exhibitors are listening, please contact <laughs> <laughs> Justin Stanley. He's our exhibit coordinator. Mm -hmm. You'll find all that information on the website. But there, you will. The exhibitors will be in the same building as events taking place uh, for the symposium. And so I know that's not always been the fact. And that was one of those things that I really wanted to happen as as I've had to trek halfway across a campus just to get to the exhibitors and then mm -hmm. trek back halfway across the campus, to go to a concert, you know? So, um, I, I was really, um, adamant about the, the exhibitors being there because I wanted them, um, uh, I wanted people to be able to pop in and out of the exhibits, uh, throughout the day rather than just leaving the only a big chunk. I, I do have a big chunk of time, for people to visit, but also um, to to allow for those moments where they um, hop over to an exhibit and and then hop back over to an event. Um, so that's that's kind of the thing that I don't know if it really answers your question, um, uh, whether it troubleshoots all the difficulties that one encounters with the schedule. But those are some of my thoughts on that. Um, uh, let's see, there was, I lost my train of thought, but I, I, as I'm looking at some of my notes here, um, I wanted to also bring up something that, um, I don't know if people, this is something a little bit different. I've, I've never really seen on the, the symposium website, uh, a call out for, um, sponsorships. Mm, that's um, a good idea. So we, we do have uh, sponsorship levels and um, for anybody, they, they don't have to be a company sponsoring. It can be um, a um, uh, individual and I've already received one uh, person who is uh, sending in, in, in the name of her father, okay. um, sending in a uh, contribution to the symposium. And so these levels are, um, are, Platinum, got to got to have all these fun names, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we have um, uh, diamond, platinum, gold, and silver. And so the the diamond is like seven thousand, the platinum six, and the gold seven, five or something mm -hmm. like that. And all of them go to um, s certain things. Like for instance, the 
the uh, diamond one is is to hire an orchestra for the symposium. Okay. And um, then the next level and, and next level it will be hire for hiring these music musicians. It's mm -hmm. it's not it's going to all go toward um, paying for um, things that are extra for the symposium. And so it'll make the symposium even better. Right. Um, right. You'll enhance the the symposium and and so on. So. Um, the what will um, our sponsors get in return? So they'll get a huge thank you from me. Isn't that enough? <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll they'll get um, they'll they'll have the opportunity to advertise um, uh, on the um, put their logo on the IH, IHS fifty four website. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to have their logo displayed um, in non-obstructive areas um on the stage if they're if they are um um a sponsor of events uh such as a concert or a um featured artist or or what have you so mm -hmm. we we we'll allow for um that kind of thing and then recognition in the program of their sponsorship okay. so these are all things that will um result from um uh you you out there <laughs> mm -hmm. being a sponsor for um one of our events at the ihs 54. so um the, there there was something else that i wanted to make sure i mentioned and it's more about a featured artist um okay. i uh and it kind of ties into planning of symposiums. Um, one of the things that I wished I had planned two years ago was nailing down the wording of the approved wording of contracts for a featured artist. Um, I started that, um, I started working on that in the summer mm -hmm. and have run into all sorts of issues <laughs> and so any future hosts out there get those contracts lined up right away because i'm i'm just i just now got approval of the wording from mm -hmm. the university and we are now able to start moving forward with that um you the the featured artists are our rock stars Mm -hmm. They're the people who draw people, uh, draw the participants to the symposium. And and I can't announce who they are. I, I think <laughs> I would um, I think I would have the the um, fiery purple anger of um, Nancy Joy breathing down my back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that didn't uh, insult her in any way. I love Nancy. But um, she has told me I can't advertise. I can't put anything out there. Right. Um, well, I think suffice it to say, these are going to be names that people will know. They are going to be world class yes. artists. They are going to be, you know, as you said, these are the rock stars of of our horn world. So I think people can be confident. You know, when when the names come out, they come out. But I don't think that should prevent anyone from going ahead and getting interested and excited about the symposium and registering and and being ready to come. I mean, the guest artists are going to be amazing. That goes without saying. So. Thank you. Those, that's exactly what I was going to follow up with. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to, to preempt. No, no, no. I t I'm talking way too much. <laughs> What's well, a podcast? You can talk as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> I want all those listeners out there to um, not get bored with my voice. We need variety here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you, you're going to be quite happy with everyone will be happy. You will find a featured artist who's going to, or more uh, than one, who's going to change your life. So, so I'm excited to to have these rock stars performing at the symposium. So, if, if there's, if I was going to say, you know, you asked what particular event would you mm -hmm. tell people to to go to, I'd tell them to go to the the featured artist concerts. Mm -hmm. and I, I think that goes without saying it. It's probably the, mm -hmm. the most um, uh, attended event throughout the whole day. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but uh, I, you know, as as another social thing, I'd really like for as many people as possible to go to the um, the the Texas barbecue uh, that we're we're going to be having. It's it's going to be in a beautiful setting. Um, uh, like I said, the King Ranch um, mm-hmm. is is what. It, the Kings Kingsville would not exist if it weren't for the King Ranch. Mm-hmm. Uh, the King Ranch still uh, um, a uh, they're a huge beneficiary to the success of the university, and particularly the research in ag and mm. and land management and so on and so forth. And they have this beautiful wildlife uh, center. Um, that's on the fringe of the campus, and we're going to go over there for the the Texas barbecue, and um, plan on hearing some mariachi music, and um, plan on just experiencing beautiful surrounding um, ag- uh, 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 garden that is native South Texas garden um, around this open veranda area, but also indoor. Uh, seating area. So we we only have um, uh, seating capacity for about 300 people. So there is a limit to, mm-hmm. to that, but first come first serve, um, but um, head on over there and check it out um, at the, check it out on the website because everything related to the symposium is all on the website. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just want to, um, talk about the website a little bit, if that's okay. Yeah, please do. It's lovely. It's well designed. It's it's the layout is uh, makes sense. So it's uh, whoever did it, they, they did a, a fantastic job. Well, thank you. Um, the my website designer is one of our uh, music alum. He's a he was a trumpet player, but his connection to the horn studio is that um, he marched mellow okay. French horn. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, shout out to Renee for doing such a great job on the website. Um, the thing that um, I wanted to mostly tell everyone about is um, on the website, you'll get um, there are several links to the same place, which is the IHS 54 Marketplace store. Mm-hmm. And whether something costs something or is free, you still register on at the store and um when you go at first um, believe it or not the task of setting that up was just left to me um the university (laughs) pretty much says here's the 800 page manual um design your store so it was quite an undertaking and i have to tell you being not being versed in in the the uh, setting up these this store um, mm-hmm. made some mistakes that I have now corrected. So um, thank you to uh, many people who s- kept telling me that, okay, this is not working on the store. This is not working. And so I was able to go in and fix a lot of things. So it should uh, run much smoother now. So there, there should be no confusions confusion on the when you're you're um, getting on the store Um, uh, and so if there is feel free to email me i am i am um, a humble person when it comes to (laughs) to this um to this part of the experience of registering for things so so let me know what's working what's not working and i will do my best to fix it well, that's great. It, 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 I was going to jump in and I got to say one thing you mentioned, the Texas barbecue. We could do an entire podcast just on Texas cuisine and barbecue and Tex-Mex and all of the Mexican influences. Uh, but, you know, it, people are you're going to have a good time eating in South Texas. I, I can I can pretty much guarantee it. <laughs> For sure. There are some, you know, uh, speaking of eating um, there, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, because I don't know how, um, if there's anybody listening who works at a university, but our university's um, food service company, they're really uh, protective of competition. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm trying to line up some, we have some local food trucks 
Oh, okay. So I'm trying to line those up so that people can walk out the door of the um, symposium of the music building and um, go get some lunch. Um, however, if you do have a car, I will have a booklet of all the local restaurants um, and they will, and, and there are some really good restaurants here in town, believe it or not, here in Kingsville with our 25,000 people, <laughs> there are some excellent restaurants. So, um, and then of course there's some chains, but um, you definitely want to check out some of these restaurants. You do, you know, of course, get your pick of, um, you know, uh, a Mexican restaurant. That's very common. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have barbecue. We have Indian food. We have excellent bakery in town. We have um, a, like a, um, a tea, tea room that serves healthier fare, lighter fare. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, there's, there's just a whole variety. I, I could go on about that. But it was funny when you were mentioning barbecue. Um, I, I don't think there is a single person, um, and it's usually the, the men in the family who don't believe that they are, who believe, let me put it this way, <laughs> they believe our, they, their brisket is the best in the whole wide world. So there are a lot of barbecue, um, passionate barbecue aficionados here. Mm -hmm. It's an institution in Texas. It it's is. an yeah. institution and they all believe they do it the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there will be plenty of options to choose from for sure. So Yeah. I would just like to take the time to say, um, to, to do a call out for proposals. Um, uh, let me do this. It's a shout out for proposals. Mm -hmm. um, so, so just know that um, a proposal will not fully be accepted until um, uh, the person has registered for the symposium. Mm -hmm. So I've received a lot of, um, I've received several um, proposals for, for um, lectures and performances and some warm up routine things, but the people haven't registered. Mm -hmm. So I won't schedule you into the conference until you um, actually uh, register. Mm -hmm. But the, the call out for the proposals, I am really looking for people who would like to do some youth oriented um, uh, presentations, um, uh, something along the line of warm up session, mm -hmm. um, some sec some lectures maybe on technique, things that you would imagine high school kids could really benefit. Maybe it's um, literature, a survey of some really great solos that every high school kid should play. Oh, that sounds um, great. College prep, uh, maybe some career opportunities. Students quite often have no clue what they can do as as horn players and what where you know they they're interested in pursuing music, but they they don't know. They think, oh, I want to be um, a professional mm -hmm. orchestral player, but they don't really know <laughs> right. what's yeah, entailed. Right. Yeah. And and so those those kind of things. Um, I, I want to call out for proposals for the amateur, um, our amateur horn players. Um, uh, again, I need people leading warm-up sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about literature that an amateur player would be interested in playing. Maybe it's um, individually, but also um, ensemble literature and mm -hmm. um, entrepreneur possibilities for amateurs. You know, um, we, you know, it's something that's pushed so much for our current students is to develop their entrepreneurial um, skills. Mm -hmm. um, but also for amateur players, I, I don't think um, uh, people have, made suggestions of okay i play the horn <laughs> what possibilities are out there and how can i maybe take what i do for a living and match it up with my horn playing and let's mm -hmm. see what can happen um and then maybe some people out there know how to uh, start community groups um or know about um literature for playing in church uh for things like that i mean there's there's a whole there's a whole variety of uh, maybe horn health um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
maybe I know that there has been a focus on that, uh, especially in the the 2020 um, uh, symposium. Um, Lydia was going to have a, it was all about horn and horn health. That's right. Um, and so um, thinking about our amateurs and how they can stay healthy um, as they, um, since they don't play all the time, how can right. they, you know, play a concert and still remain healthy? Um, we still need uh, volunteers. I, there's a volunteer uh, registration. Um, you get your symposium paid for, the registration paid for, you get two t-shirts, <laughs> <laughs> you get uh, uh, half your dorm paid for, and the dorms aren't that expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you get to help with a great symposium. When I say that, I'm, I'm meaning that for a lot of people, um, especially students, uh, this is a really good um, thing to do as far as building your um, ability to work with others. And it's a learning experience as mm -hmm. well as, as helping uh, the symposium out. So so get out there and, some, and, and register for being volunteers. And you'll probably you know, have a chance to ride in the car with a really famous person, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's things like that. Um, so, and then I already mentioned the call out for um, sponsorships. And then still just in general, most people um, send in lecture and performance um, uh, proposals, mm -hmm. but still, you know, bring them in, keep, keep them coming. We, sure. we need more variety. So that's the biggest thing that I kind of want to leave people with right now. Well, that's awesome, and and thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your schedule today to talk with me. So, uh, you've been hearing from uh, Dr. Jennifer Schultes, uh, professor of horn at Texas A and M Kingsville, and the host of IHS Fifty Four IHS Fifty Four dot com. <laughs>